Well, viewers, welcome to the February video. We'll be back into the middle of winter here on the allotments. We're going to have a look around today of some of the changes that's taking place. And one of the things you can see are the spring cabbage, which despite the cold are looking quite good. We should look at this elephant garlic, which is popping its head up through the snowflakes. And we'll look around at the ground, which you can see what the, the effect of cold weather makes on it and what help it gives to us gardeners. And then we'll retreat back to the little greenhouse in the back garden where the first optimistic signs of spring are popping through the, the compost in their little pots and trays. And I thought we'd make a, we'd, we'd, we'd probably try every show, we'd do a little bit of uh, sort of, a, a kind of either build a little refuge or create something that would you know, provide the, the wildlife in the Rhonda uh, with, a, with a bit of additional material to build their homes with. That's quite all right, so, uh, as long as we don't get any rabbits. No, no. <laughs> no, 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 I'm quite happy no, for no. these useful bits of wildlife no. to live on my plot, but yeah. I don't want any of these... Yeah. Useful these yeah, beneficial wildlife. Bene so beneficial good, good wildlife, yes. So, I mean, hopefully by the end of this uh, the end of this summer, there'll be a whole sort of cacophony of, uh, uh, of, uh, uh, of features in the, in the, uh, across the allotment, which, uh, which well, I, mean, I would, can reassure you, they won't compromise your growing space. Well, will but, the, will but the equally, cacophony, is that a new disease now? Do I have to, will I have to spray <laughs> against it's cacophony? Not right, it's not the right word, but I like it. So, <laughs> It's, fine. it's, it's one fine. of the few words you've learned, is it? It's cacophony. It's cacophony. It is, yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna, you're gonna so, help yeah. me now. So we're gonna do, we're, beneficial we're, we're gonna do animals that. and insects to my plot. Definitely, we're gonna have a crack at that. So uh, that'll, that'll suit me fine. Because over the years, with the little pond, the only thing I'd ever failed that you brought down here was that little bee. I think we'll have to make it make amends. We make put amends. a little bee tube. Yeah, I think possibly we put it in the wrong place. Yeah, it never, so, it never uh, really attracted any inhabitants this, this at year, all. This year we'll try harder. Right. Because we don't want to be defeated I'll by, the, by the fact that these things haven't been adopted by by uh, the creatures that they're intended for. So I think we'll. Uh, we we'll go back and we go back and revisit else or something like that. We'll yeah, revisit. We'll that. revisit it. So because bees are my number one friends, <laughs> and I, I want more of those. Definitely. So right. we'll do that, and uh, and I think really it's a it's a fabulously cool day. So we've we've kind of almost had long enough sitting on this bench. So should we go and have a shifty and Want see what shifty? we can find? Go and see them. Right. I'm gonna get all your props. Careful, I know. Don't you disappear, no Neil. Right, so let's get started and look at these spring greens. They're, they're looking particularly nice, aren't they? They are looking good, they are yeah. looking good. Yeah. And again, the, the, you know, one of the beauty of this little cold snap is brought them back to where they should be. Indeed. They were definitely. making lots of too much young growth, but that's brought them back in your line, it's, just uh, where they should be. It is, it's check the growth, and consequently they'll be superb just in time for when you want to start scoffing. They will, they should be ready for the April. <laughs> spring cabbage and April, to me, are the two things that go together. Definitely. It's a bit like strawberries and cream. <laughs> So how, how much how much bigger do they need to be before you sort of harvest? Oh, quite them, a then? bit. They, they, yeah. One thing with spring cabbage, they, they don't really form a heart. Right. They are what is known as spring greens. Do they form a heart? If you left them for ages, would they form they're a heart? Not a really solid heart. No. They're not that sort of. They are a, a greens. Yeah. So they they will form semi hard but it will always be light it's green. It's almost like a, a sort of a funnily shape, isn't it? I suppose, like a little yeah. Well, this this, this pyramid, one, I guess. This is called one of the rows is called flower of spring. There's a label at the far end. They're going to dig out from the snow. And the reason it's called flower of spring is because it looks like a flower head, right. but it's not completely hard like a, the normal crunchy cabbage. No, and that's no. what you want. You want the greens. It's a, it's a sort of poor man's spinach, I suppose, isn't it? Poor, poor man's spinach. Oh. <laughs> you know, because you've well, got the situation where it's this leafy veg, very, very nutritious, but not really the crunchy coleslaw -y type cabbages you can grow in the No, summer. no, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a coleslaw cabbage, no, is no, it? No, no. But, it's it's not, but spring, I think spring greens are probably my favourite of the cabbages. A, because you've got that flavour at the... Uh, it seems like the completely right time of year yeah, for so that flavour. You're, you're in the younger gap. The winter is just leaving out the back door and these are the first cuttings on the half the plot for the year. Yeah. And so you've got some fresh. Yeah. And uh, to add to the stuff you hopefully still got in the sheds that you just see, but you know, your potatoes, which are still there. Yeah. And you, yeah. your freezer is now beginning to look a bit depleted. Yeah. So April is always a difficult month and hopefully... We can we start harvesting some of the yeah, green stuff? Yeah, some of those. Yeah, so you, 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 you keep, keeps you with this 12 months of the year living off the plot. Yeah, no, it's good. And yeah. the nets work well this year, hasn't it? It has, I mean, you know, sign. The, pigeons off. the only thing it has it, it has done the opposite of is stop the little other birds getting underneath and keeping the slug bay at bay, and you right, can see the outer right. leaves. But again, that's not a major problem. You don't eat the outer leaves anyway, you can cut those away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's interesting that the slug, I mean, folks always say about slugs. 
you know, where do they, does the winter kill them off and things like that? It doesn't knock, it doesn't phase them at all, does it? They I mean, go, cold they'll, weather. They'll just, they know, and they'll, they'll go down, down and down and down yeah. and down. And they'll, yeah. they'll keep below that little frost level underneath the ground. Only advantage is when they're underground, they're not nibbling anything. Yeah, but, that's true uh, enough. Yeah. They'll be back in force now. As soon as the weather breaks, the warmth comes out. And I'll have to guard That's all you need, things. isn't it? One, you need just like a, a day's mild weather, a little bit of a thaw, and yeah. you come out at night, you shine a torch on, slugs all over the place. Oh, they'll be back, they'll be hungry. They won't go along without a munch, will they? They won't go along without a munch. They don't go along without a munch. They don't go along without a munch. They soon come back and munch. Well, Richard, just all this cold weather. They are popping, the, the elephant garlic is popping through. It is. It, well, you, you've got uh, an array of garlic just down below us here. And I, I grew garlic this year, and I was particularly uh, disappointed with last year's garlic efforts. So this year I've put them in a slightly different place, and I've and I've kind of and I'm, I'm going to look after them with kit gloves, you know, the because I, I do love. You need Mother garlic. Nature as well. You they, do, you do. It did was not was not a good 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 running for garlic. Last <laughs> Easy year. for you to say. <laughs> so, uh, so, wasn't so it wasn't a good, so good so garlic. Wasn't a good year last year. It wasn't a good year for garlic, no. <laughs> but again, uh, the reason yeah. they, the the elephant garlic's in there is to me, elephant garlic isn't the garlic, right? Because it's it's got it's got a slight hint of garlic. Have you not grown any conventional garlic this year? Yes, conventional garlic. Oh, okay, right. over there. There's Down quite there. A, right, there right. are about uh, forty plus cloves out over there. Right, right. Of four no, different I can varieties. See that coming nicely. But I had I had a couple of elephant given me. Yep. And I do we use them as a roast vegetable. Right. They're a lovely fleshy vegetable, but when it comes to garlic, they're no good to add to anything. You yeah. can't you can't add them to a dish to put that spice of garlic in. Yeah. They are. I don't know why they even call them garlic. I don't even they are. They just call them elephant garlic. Well, I grew. I grew one last year because you generously gave me one one clove. At the beginning of last year. <laughs> well, they are well, huge. I grew one, but it was more. It was. It wasn't really elephant garlic. It was more shrew garlic. Oh, oh right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, elephant garlic will grow pretty well. But I put it in that tub. There's what three, seven in there, and now they'll do me. That'll make about twenty-one big cloves of elephant garlic, okay. which you can throw in with your roast meat. Yep. And then they come out as a lovely taste on them end because they've got the flavour of the roast meat. So what does garlic but, like though? I mean you've got those in that you know in your half a barrel there. What does it like? What food stuff does it like? I mean, how can you feed it to get it big and juicy? Well you know, more as you know, most of my stuff is fed all my natural stuff from the wormery. Yep. It's the mixture of the of the sheep manure in the tank. Yeah. And I do occasionally look in the under garden centre for some organic seaweed extract which I can actually feed as okay. a liquid feed right, but again right. I tend to use more <laughs> liquid feeds but again in the bottom of there there's a lot of well rotted manure yep. it's compost in there so once the roots go down it's feeding on what's the goodness out of that manure right, so right. if you do if you do your ground well and the fertility is high yep. then most plants will survive quite adequately it doesn't have to worry too much this frost this freezing period that's, garlic needs that as well doesn't it it, it needs to clove yeah. to sort of split up and, it, it, uh, what should really happen is you, when you plant date October into early November you want the ground to go extremely cold then, because then the root will make lots of growth below the surface and give it a good root structure before the green shoot comes up. Right. So the good root structure then will feed the green, the green will then feed back to the new garlic. But if you don't get that, you get lots of top and small garlic okay. bulbs underneath. Right, right. Yeah. And again, that was the problem there. They were looking very, very happy and they shouldn't have been. They, right. should, have been, they should not have been making that amount of green growth. Right. It, they came through, they popped through before Christmas, they popped through. Yeah. And I didn't want to see them, but they didn't think you do it. The ground never had a cold chill. The, but the clothes went in and they just started to do what they wanted to do, make green tops. Right. But again, this will hopefully check them a bit and the green will stop growing and a bit more root will form underneath. Fantastic. But again, yeah. it needs a hot summer. Garlic likes sun on its back. It really right. likes a hot summer. Right. cold weather, the frost and the snow, is that you can see what impact it makes on the soil. Those large clumps where you've turned in everything, you've left them large, the frost has got in penetrated, and as it comes out, then it, the, the all of that ground will start to crumble. It is, that's kind of, kind of freeze-thaw thing, you know, yeah. action is it's a classic action and for, for ground. I mean, your ground is better than mine anyway. I mean, I, I tend to find that mine tends to grow out quite quickly, my dry out quite quickly in the garden right. and you get these rock solid nuggets if you let them if you let that happen if you don't do anything with it yeah uh, so you know if I, well i because i did this year i took a, I took a leaf from your book and i dug the garden uh, in january and then we just had this cold spell so actually yeah, that'll it. shatter all those lovely it will. it'll clumps. break it'll break them down I and mean, it'll get in i mean you know we know what ice crystal does we've seen it from plumbing and god knows what yeah it expands and then it explodes in there so yeah, as it's, it's melting yeah. and it's, it breaks that all down yeah so definitely. it's perfect and you 
if you miss out on winter digging, you miss out on one of the treats of life. Because right. one, one my thing we always have is a bit of work done at the sure? semi. <laughs> yeah. I'm, not sure, I'm not convinced that's quite right. <laughs> it I mean, is your definition of treat and my definition of treat. Might be slightly different, different. Well, I mean. Morning. Morning. How are you? But, you know, one, of, one of the advantages is, you know, if you do the work now, when the start March, April comes along and the ground is turned over, it's starting to break down, it's all friable, a few minutes with a fork and you're ready to plant. Yeah. If you haven't done that hard work and it's panned down solid, you turn it over with a fork, then you spend an infinite amount of time banging it to break it down. Yeah, and it enough. makes you, it slows you down considerably. I reckon an hour spent now saves you five in the spring. Right. So what's this wildlife thing you're going to show me? Well, on? I'm going to show you. I need another pair of hands, but I brought some little twiggy things with me, so, uh, so you might have to hold on to the thing while I just work out the best way to do it, really. So I've There's been relegated now to an assistant. Yeah, right. I've been relegated to an assistant. <laughs> I know my place in life. Really, it's just what happens at your time of life, really. I, I get relegated well, to really, an assistant. Really, you know, your time of life, you should be happy to be involved in anything. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, else wants, somebody else wants you for. <laughs> Uh, right, so uh, a few a few bits and pieces here. I bet right. you're intrigued. I am intrigued by this. Intrigued. So I thought what I thought we'd do is make a because it's the beginning of February and the birds are just thinking about nesting, aren't they? Right. right. And if you look around, everything here, whilst it's slightly random, there's there's not an enormous amounts of material for birds to take off for their nests, are there really? Not they? really. No, no. There's not. There's no feathers. There's no dry grass. No, there's no, no, that, no. No. So I brought we some. Uh, particular... brought some. Any idea what feathers these are? What feather are these? They're from <laughs> a bird. They are from a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a clue. Look at that. Uh, oh, your son Anthony would know no, what this. That's is. definitely a duck. That's, it is a duck. It's it's a, a mallard duck. duck. It's yeah. a mallard duck. So the mallard duck, it's kindly uh, relinquished its feathers. Did you take it off? It's kindly relinquished did, everything. Did it? Were these, <laughs> we were these physically we removed, it, or did it? Or you ate it? All right. So <laughs> he had a double use. So waste not, want not. So right. we keep these feathers. And uh, I brought some. And we've got some uh, hay in there. And you'll know what that is, being a Welshman, more than anything. Oh, some sheep wool. It's some sheep. Are these the Fish. Comrade in arms. Are these the fishbone flock? Sheep, are they? Sheep. So they, they are from the fishbone flock. So that was what we sort of uh, sh right. sheared off the sheep well, last year. A possible uh, detached residence for this bird. Isn't it? <laughs> Thank <laughs> goodness, <laughs> they'll go for a few grand. I'd rather it's a work on. I'd rather to see. I'd rather to see. So it's. And I brought some willow with me. I brought these these long little whips. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not no, if I'm, so I'm, they're, they're, called, we're, they're called whips for a reason. Yeah, it's I a long time. It's a long time. Long time since you <laughs> <laughs> you experience a little bit like that, isn't it? <laughs> so uh, we've got these. Right. And what we do is somehow we'll uh, we'll make a nice little circle, nice little spiral of these willow, and then possibly weave all this material in amongst it all. So if I, what have I got to do now? <laughs> so if you, <laughs> I hold this ring, on to that, right? right? And then if I sort of, if I uh, kind of go, if I just kind of pull that round like that, right? There we go. I mean, it's probably an easy way to do this. In fact, uh, you know, there's, there's, gonna there's work. almost certainly a better way <laughs> yeah. to do it. That's not going to work. But if I do it like that, do it slightly right. longer. Like, yeah, now you've got you it. Go. Now you've got it. Okay, and then now if I go sort of through the middle, through there, like that. Right. Here we go. This is two two blokes. Uh, Sitting here, uh, freezing on a bench uh, in Pete, the middle Pete, of the valley. Peter Purvis would be proud mm. of, of this. you today. <laughs> I think he got a warmer studio when <laughs> we get there. Got, yeah, I think he probably has. So yeah, uh, so, yeah so keep going round like this. And, uh, and mind your fingers. Not my fingers, I worry about it. You keep lashing me across the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's, right. that's got to be... Uh, that's got to be a good start, isn't it? That's so, a good start, that, yeah. A good start. So we can... If we pop, pass, pass, we put another one in there... Right. Like, uh... Around there. Like so. Like right. That. And then, uh... Here we go. Here we go again. Get ripped again. <laughs> here we go. And then just pull that, pull that right through there. It's an amazing thing, these whips. They, they're so tough, aren't they? And they are. They, they bend quite easily, they do don't bend. they? They're excellent they bend, at bending. They're very good. I, right. I usually charge oh, for these, you know, so you... I'm getting this... <laughs> I'm paying the I'm paying the ultimate price penalty of pain. <laughs> <laughs> and I think what will happen is we'll I'll push them through we'll and see if I get safely getting whipped. <laughs> you can, I mean, really, you could probably. I mean, really, you could probably do this on your well, own. I go on until one day I get all these be, red wheels across my face. Wouldn't be anywhere near as much fun, would it? <laughs> wouldn't be anywhere as much fun. But what's remarkable is it is that that actually to me that looks quite nice, doesn't it? Does it, does it look well, quite yeah, nice but I can't see the birds sitting on that. That'd be a hell of a bloody big bird, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so what we'll do is I think we'll we'll stuff all these gaps right with right. this material. So we stuff oh, this, I do. I so know. stuff the gaps with this material, a bit of right. sheep's wool and stuff like that. So you right. do your side. Right. I'll do my side. That's about the same. It looks tight inside. I'd cover it in bloody bits though. <laughs> 
<laughs> You're intrigued with that, are you? <laughs> this is the keep my carrots one. <laughs> I tell you what, Jeff, I'll get you one of these to go over to Caffelli with. Right? <laughs> <laughs> this this will pull the birds. <laughs> I see you in the morning. This will, <laughs> this will pull the birds. <laughs> Look at that. So there you go. Yeah, so that's, yeah. you know, what do you good. think? Right, well, what do you think? It's my side looks quite good. I'm not quite sure you was. It's a bit divided. It's a bit, it's a, but it's I think what's quite fun about this is we've kind of, in fact, we've made the whole structure slightly stronger off the back of stuffing all these bits and pieces between the, have, yes. the stems. And uh, and really now that's a fabulous little spiral for birds to pluck and bits and bobs too. So where, so where should we go? We'll put it down where in the hedge. Best, where do you think the best place is? Down in the hedge. Do, do right? hang, have you got some string? Ah, uh, you got some string. Yes. We'll, we'll take care of that. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll tie it up and hang it up. Yeah. Why? Well, got a little stick in me. Feather. Yes, I always got string. The garden that always got string. It looks like some pagan symbol on the bottom, you know, isn't it? Is that enough to hang from there? <laughs> it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's going to work. See? Almost got everything here. Yeah? Everything, yeah. There you go. Is that all right there? That's really good there. there. That's it looks really good there. Yeah. Looks like some medieval Welsh burial ground. <laughs> It's rather yeah. good. Are you happy with it? I am very happy good with it. You know, it's adorning your allotment. So it's adorning uh, my allotment. As long as this robin comes back, because I have a very good mate to my this robin. I, whenever I come up on these cold mornings, I always dig a little hole in the compost heap, yep. and he joins me then looking for all the grubs and worms. So yeah, we, we oh, are big mates. Yeah, good so stuff. he can bring his so wife along now. now. So there we are. We have it's a new nice. adornment then. Good stuff. <laughs> you on his way? <laughs> the crow in the background. <laughs> I've got to show you what to do, are you? <laughs> right, we're going to head back now, back to Terry's, and check out those fabulous little green broad bean shoots that are sprouting from those polystyrene pots in Terry's greenhouse. So it makes a big difference just to travel down from the valley back to the back garden, and you can feel the difference in temperature in this little greenhouse. All these little plants are looking quite happy in here. They begin to pop their head through this compost. So we have the, the, the start of a new season. It really fills you with optimism. When stuff starts to pop up, you know that spring is not too far away. So the broad beans have all got their heads up. The little onions are all, all looking, standing proudly in there. They've got their root in, they're starting to grow. And there's the first crops that go into cloches in late March, the lettuce and the cabbages. So we have a good start to the new season already well underway. It's only a small greenhouse, one little paraffin lamp, but it makes wonders what you can do in one of these things. So these, very shortly, will start to move their way up to the colder climbs of the valley, go up into the hills to be acclimatised, ready for the Summer Olympics on the plot, to grow and make wonderful vegetables. Well, I think it's goodbye from us. I think it is. I think we've, uh, we've, we really need to get in and get warm now, don't we, and get some good food inside us. Definitely, definitely. And hopefully next month we shall get together in some warmer climes. A and different we'll, month right in March. It'll, it'll be a different month. Up yeah. on the spring would have sprung up on the hillside there. That's so And exciting. I think it'll be a lot warmer and we'll see some changes occurring out on the plot. All the snow would have gone, the frost would have gone. Definitely. And spring will have definitely sprung. Indeed. So here's a parting gift. And uh, and with that, uh, you, you keep that. <laughs> no, I will say well, goodbye to the viewers. Gardener's best friend. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>